Dan. Um, I see we have a good number of people. I'm sure Sam will be joining, so uh, we will start because we have quite some number of slides to go through just to make sure that we are able to cover what we plan for today. Um, please, if you don't hear me, just uh, type or uh, use the chat box, or if you don't hear the presenter, and then we'll try to fix it or see how to handle that so that we can all get the maximum out of this. Um, so today's uh, webinar is on integrating uh, accountability to affected population uh, in a nutrition uh, cluster, humanitarian program cycle. Um, and this is a follow-up uh, of the other several uh, webinars we've had. The rationale of doing this, uh, number one, is just to make sure that we are uh, starting to incorporate that or to think that um, in the planning process for the HPC, we also understand that, you know, the response is not stopping because of this. So there's been many questions that are coming in um, that are directed towards the practicality or implementation side of it. So uh, we have tailored this presentation based on the questions that you have uh, sent us and also uh, based on what has been coming before over the past several months and also to just support uh, the, the overall process for, for HPC. So my name is Abigail um, Nukuri and I'm the GNC uh, Help Desk for Coordination. And this presentation has been done jointly with UNICEF AAP team uh, in Switzerland. Uh, and we are having Carla on call who will actually uh, do the actual presentation. So I just want to thank everyone of you for taking time to join. And we hope that uh, the presentation will be useful. We will have some time at the end of the call. So if you have the questions, you can type them uh, at the chat or also uh, wait at the end of the presentation and you can ask them and Carla will be and myself will be able to to address them. So thank you very much and over to you Carla. Thank you Abby. Uh, hello everybody, good morning or good afternoon depending on uh, where you are. This is my name is Carla Daher and I am a, a member in the accountability to affected population team here in Switzerland. Uh, we are with the Office of Emergency Programs and the team is mandated to support clusters in uh, uh, integrating uh, AP within its HPC, but also uh, is meant to support a UNICEF scale up AP internally as an organization. Um, I have been uh, asked to um, uh, prepare this webinar and try as much as possible to uh, clarify what AAP concretely is, uh, just to uh, see if this could help you in your planning, especially as you are do uh, currently do your HNOs. Um, very happy to be uh, here on board with you, and please, uh, uh, any time if somebody has uh, questions, uh, as Abby said, we're most, uh, you're most welcome to just share and uh, we can discuss. So with, uh, I'm going to start, uh, we have a few slides, slides here. Um, and just to quickly tell you what we're going to cover through this webinar, uh, this is the table of content. Uh, in fact, we're going to go through firstly defining what AAP is, uh, showing you a little bit what the global definitions are, but also practically what does it mean for our own organizations and as members of the cluster. Uh, second, we will uh, see together what does it mean uh, for us as a nutrition cluster and then go deeply into the phases of the humanitarian program cycle and see how can we integrate AP in each of the phases. Then cover a little bit uh, of country examples. I only picked two, but we could also hear from you on some of the things that are happening uh, or could uh, or are in the pipeline or things that you wanted to do and didn't work well if you need some advice and finish with some overall 
or recommendations. I also added a slide on resources because I wanted to discuss the um, the operational framework on AAP that uh, the nutrition cluster currently has and that some of you might be familiar with just to see with you how it can help as a tool and how it can be, be complemented with other helpful tools uh, that I could recommend to you. And then finish definitely with a QA and a uh, session. If there is anything in this uh, outline that is missing, also please feel free to write it in the chat box. I will start uh, now with what is uh, AAP and go over some of the global definitions that are out there. Um, you know the, uh, in, uh, the AAP is seen as the mutual responsibility that humanitarian aid providers and other stakeholders, specifically donors and governments, uh, to use their power and resources ethically and responsibly to put people at the center of humanitarian actions. So basically, AP is becoming a little bit the synonym of putting people at the center uh, of everything that we do. And in essence, this simply means being accountable for making sure assistance generates the best possible outcomes for all different groups affected by a crisis. And this means taking account that there are different groups affected from the beginning of our planning. And second of all, making sure that we're using the best quality standards, monitoring our quality standards, and engaging people in uh, our planning, uh, our design planning, uh, implementation, and monitoring. The uh, Interagency Standing Committee uh, and the core humanitarian standards definition of AAP is quite similar, uh, using just the different language on basically also the use of power responsibly. So if, as you see, you see the word power coming very strongly in both and responsibly by taking taking account of, giving account to, and being held to account by the people humanitarian organizations seek to assist, and putting communities and people at the center of humanitarian action, and promoting respect for their fundamental human rights, underpinned by the right to life with dignity, and the right to protection and security. So what I want to highlight in these two definitions are the similarities, basically by the, the use of the word using power responsibly, so treating affected populations as a, a partner, not as a beneficiary group, and, and, and therefore training our teams to be able to deal with them in appropriate ways, but also putting them at the center meaning taking their views and opinions very seriously into account and that may uh, need that may need us to go back to the way we do things and try to revise it to uh, really take community eng engagement as a serious commitment and way of work in our day-to-day um, -day, uh, interventions now, practically, I wanted to just show you this diagram that we are using in our trainings just to show you what does it mean when we go back as in, uh, separate organizations. We're all members of a nutrition cluster, but at the end of the day, we're also separate organizations working uh, uh, and having our own like funding and own teams and you know sometimes our own priorities. So if we go back to that level of the organizational level, basically, uh, I'm going to go uh, through the slide from right to left. So we start basically by saying when we want AAP to happen, we want to look again at our way as an organization and programs, at our ways of looking and doing and planning and resourcing community engagement. Are we putting community engagement as a priority? Are we very uh, uh, thoroughly planning it or are we putting it as a second priority uh, because we always say uh, if we do focus group discussions here and there, then we're engaging communities. So it's also a way of looking at how much time, resources, and uh, uh, expertise we're putting into our community engagement uh, activities and strategies. So community eng engagement is a key pillar and in our uh, in the interagency world, they have defined three key pillars to what defines a community engagement. We want to engage communities uh, from the beginning by uh, telling people from the very beginning, literally the very beginning, what is our project, who are we as a cluster, who are the humanitarian aid agencies there, uh, and what are the criteria for selecting some uh, uh, some households or some uh, what we call beneficiaries over others, although we don't want to use the word beneficiaries anymore in the AAP um, milieu. 
uh, uh, participation, how are we engaging meaningfully people in every step of the humanitarian program cycle in a way that is meaningful, but also not very, uh, that doesn't add to the burden, especially when we are very uh, uh, pressured by time and resources. Also feedbacks, complaints and response, uh, which I'm going to talk to you about later on. How are we making sure we have those systems in place? And we'll, not only at an organizational level, but how is our organization's feedback talking to our partners' feedback in the cluster so that as a cluster, you guys have a collective feedback system that is generating a collective set of information from which you can actually monitor and together uh, seek uh, a response to affected communities. Also, uh, how are we working on the attitude of our staff and code of conduct? So from the very beginning, uh, as managers, we tend to look more into proposal writing and funding and you know strategy development, uh, capacity building, but less uh, focusing on what is the right uh, skill set for our frontline workers who are in daily contact with our communities. Are they the right people? Have they been trained on respect, dignity, uh, communication? Uh, are they? Uh, do they? have the attitudes to actually respect and treat people as partners and not as superiors? And do they have the willingness to listen and bring back feedback, uh, act on it and respond back? Do you as an organization have a dedicated set of staff to do that? Or do you ask the same people to do uh, multiple tasks like we're seeing in many clusters? And that is not a critic at all, but that is a, a, a reality that everybody is telling us about the, the multiple hatting that is not allowing people to do proper community engagement uh, very often. Do we have collective systems at the cluster level, uh, a collective feedback system, a community engagement strategy that we all share as a cluster and standardize our interventions together? And do we uh, work based on evidence? And all of these, uh, if all of these are in place, if we have managed as an organization to put these together, have they, are we actually using whatever we're generating from all those systems and, and, and strategies to actually define and inform our management decisions, our funding decisions, our planning, our monitoring tools. Do they have AAP? Are we taking people's, uh, are we putting people at the center in our organizational systems and procedure program implementation, even our supply departments and team? Are they engaged in uh, whatever discussions we have as a team in the organization as a result? result of what we're getting from feedbacks, participation, information sharing, evidence, and all of that. So basically, this is what we mean by AAP. How can we ensure our program and our organization is becoming more accountable in literally every single process that we have within. And then how can we contribute with that to the cluster to make sure the cluster is actually also um, uh, uh, boosting its accountability towards affected populations? Why is it important for the nutrition cluster? Because there's too much attention now on, on this uh, 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 you know, accountability uh, being becoming a priority for all the donors and all the humanitarian community. I know for a fact the FID now has a, an AAP separate AAP department within their offices on that, and they are now making sure that every single proposal has a very concrete AAP component to ensure that people are being put at the center in concrete uh, ways. And so, the sooner we get on, uh, we get hold of this uh, expertise, the better we are in terms of funding opportunities. Opportunities and also to maximize uh, uh, the, the quality of our results. What does it mean integrating an AP in the humanitarian program cycle? I'm going to start very quickly by preparedness, which is a phase that we almost and often uh, uh, forget or time, uh, tend to overlook. There's minimum recommended AAP actions when we talk about putting people at the center. Basically, it's, it's about us as partners identifying each other in the nutrition cluster and 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 being very transparent about who is able to do AAP and who doesn't really have neither the technical expertise or the resources to do it. And so what are the capacity building needs that the nutrition cluster can provide in that area so that all partners can do it well. Also reviewing all existing preparedness plans, be it UNICEF plans, partners plans, the I ask plans and integrating them with an AAP lens in the cluster situational analysis so that when you have an analysis, you are able 
able to say, okay, such and such plans are in place. This is what they actually uh, contain. And we want to build on that to have our own uh, nutrition uh, cluster situational analysis based on that so that our plans can actually be uh, informed by those. Identify and advance possible training tools and resources to strengthen cluster partners on AAP. And so, uh, so, so some of the key also additional actions to the minimum ones are to and most importantly, to familiarize ourselves with the CHS, which are the core humanitarian standards. I don't know if how many of you have, have, have seen those or are familiar with those, uh, but uh, I'm going to go through them very quickly in a bit. But those are the, uh, the, the main standards that we actually encourage everybody to look at when we talk about quality and accountability in the AAP uh, milieu. Also, the sphere standards uh, that are there to uh, uh, remind us of the quality standards that we want our uh, partners to actually follow and adopt in their uh, response as well as other quality and accountability standards, but mainly the CHS and the SPHERE are the main two that we as AAP interagency, we kind of encourage all clusters, not only nutrition, uh, to actually uh, use. Also participate in cluster coordinator and partners trainings with a stronger emphasis on AAP, review reports and evaluation from previous crises, and there is a lot going on. So I think AAP is, could sound like a little bit new to many of you, but if you go online, and you put lessons learned on AAP, you will be very, uh, very uh, surprised with a lot of nutrition clusters as well, having a lot of lessons learned on AAP with a lot of very interesting recommendations that could also give you an idea of what it means to actually concretely implement it on the ground. And also consult with uh, uh, agencies that have been doing it for quite some time and have a lot of bagage and, and knowledge to give in that uh, area of work like OCHA, IOM, UNHCR, UNICEF and uh, ICRC. What has worked well in other crises to set up a foundation for AAP in the cluster is make sure as a cluster you have an AAP as a sti standing item on uh, your meet or on your agendas and ensure also that uh, uh, it is in the SAG uh, TORs of your cluster. And uh, we also tend to always encourage uh, at inter-cluster uh, level to have like a separate technical working group that is focused on AAP and community engagement. And so you as a cluster partner, uh, cluster partners could encourage that and always link up to that group. I've, I've done many missions where a lot of, uh, a lot of these groups uh, exist, but not necessarily with systematic linkage with the nutrition cluster or all the other clusters. So that linkage is quite important and could help you a lot in defining your community engagement strategies, if you want to have collective feedback mechanisms as a cluster, these people are the technical people that could actually help you uh, do the work, if any. Organize trainings, knowledge sharing workshops, and consider ways of making sure affected groups are with you on the table. That is something that we see a lot on paper, but very few clusters or coordination structures have actually uh, sought to actually bring uh, communities to sit on the table. I'm not talking about huge numbers. I'm talking about representatives that communities have actually chosen to sit uh, uh, every now and then with you on the table and, and listen to the plans and, and feedback from, from what they have consulted with their peers in the community and tell you uh, how to uh, prioritize what people want. The second step it needs analysis, uh, needs assessment and analysis. So when we talk about that, uh, we want to. Uh, our main message as AAP is you as cluster partners or cluster coordinators, uh, there is a need to advocate for inclusion of AAP questions in all assessments, including and most importantly those informing the HNO or those that are taking place or that you, that you where you have the opportunity. Yeah, I mean the assessments uh, uh, that you can do before your HNO. I know now you are in the process, many of you are in the process of developing their HNOs. I'm not sure how many of you are in now doing uh, ongoing assessments 
or planning to do ones, but having AAP questions could change all your perspective. And I will show you why when I show you the sorts of questions we could add and, and, and what that could give you in terms of information. The analysis of humanitarian priorities should be based on consultation with affected groups. And from the meetings we are having with donors, they are telling us that the more evidence there is that anything that comes in the HNO is based on direct consultations with affected groups rather than secondary data, the more the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, how to say, the legitimacy of, 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 uh, of that analysis and the more uh, opportunities of funding there is. That is something, for example, I personally heard from a donor or two actually donors last week in a meeting. Even in the most difficult and challenging environments, it's still possible to generate a good enough analysis of needs that includes views and perspective of affected people uh, themselves. If we want to focus only on needs analysis uh, assessment before going to the analysis, we just want to say that um, um, it, not all, uh, not not every response necessitates a new uh, needs assessment or a new set of needs assessment. If you have enough good ex existing data uh, or information from secondary data reviews or other sources, it's quite good. We're not saying uh, dismiss those, but what we're actually saying on top of looking at the secondary data, which are the MSNAs, household level assessments that you might have, sector level assessments, post distribution monitoring. If you guys have uh, any anything uh, like that. We also want to make sure that there is enough information about affected people's needs, priorities, and concerns. And what are those exactly? And if there is gap in terms of that particular area of, of uh, data, then we need to think as a cluster, okay, what do we do then? Uh, secondary data is not enough. Uh, what do we do? Do we jump into primary data collection or we don't have time? We are very tight on time when it comes to HNO. What do we do, etc.? So our advice is always, because people think when we talk about primary data collection, when we tell all the cluster, advocate to have primary data, qualitative data on people's priorities and concerns, people get scared. And there's always a little bit of a pushback because people think that we are asking or we are encouraging or advising like thorough, uh, very scientific uh, uh, surveys. That's not what we're saying. We're saying if you have a survey that is planned, like an MSNA, that is now being planned, we have shared with the nutrition cluster a set of questions on AAP that you could add to this MSNA. But if you have done that already and you're past that step, but you still haven't finished your HNO, you can still jump into a quick and dirty, we call it, quick and dirty round of focus group discussions here, uh, meetings with communities there to actually capture those needs and priorities. And why is that important? Because as the second uh, level of uh, encouragement is to actually speak to different groups separately. Uh, oftentimes it, in HNOs we see, for example, uh, the HNO telling us about a group of immigrants or a group of refugees in geographical area X. What we want is to go a little bit deeper. What does it tell us? That group, who are they? Are we talking about elderly? Are we talking about uh, people living with disabilities? Are we talking about young people? Are we talking about um, uh, 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 girls, women, lactating? Like, who are these people we're talking about? What are the needs? The needs are very different across groups. And if we do not account for that from the very beginning, we uh, tend to actually go into uh, making available services that are not used by everybody. Because people will still have bottlenecks to using those services because we didn't take into account what could be those bottlenecks from the very beginning, or are, what are the concerns related to access, for example, from the very beginning. If we do that assessment at the beginning, even in a, in a quick and dirty way, we could actually overcome that from uh, the beginning. That is why we tend to, uh, to focus on this a lot before the HNO and really ask clusters to have that in their plans from the beginning. The sorts of questions we add, for example, if you look at the new uh, MSNA, uh, the questionnaire that we shared with the nutrition cluster, and I'm sure Abby could share again uh, that questionnaire with you, uh, the, the sort of AAP questions that we added to that questionnaire were on those uh, one, two, three, four, five main areas. Uh, 
which are information sharing. So we added question on uh, that aim at understanding if household uh, 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 need some information, um, some specific information, or if they have received information on time uh, in a quality, like quality information that is relevant, that is timely to what they need, and if they're using appropriate channels, language, and in a transparent way. Is that there? Are you, the, is the cluster or the partners doing it correctly? Yes or wrong uh, or not? If not, what can we do about it from the beginning? On participation and engagement of, of community, these questions assess the extent to which the community is engaged in a meaningful way in the design of the humanitarian assistance, but also in other phases like monitoring, evaluation of the response. There's also a question that we added on existing feedback mechanisms. This is a particularly important question because not only it tells us if uh, if we as cluster partners have put uh, had have the resources and we 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 have developed a, a thorough feedback collective feedback mechanism to hear complaints and and suggestions from people, but it also tells us if we did and if that system was existing, what were the main concerns that came up? You don't you you, you will be surprised to know in countries or in clusters that have those systems in place how much information comes out of these and how much it informs a response and how much it can lead to better results if you have it. It could be seen as a hassle at the beginning because it needs technical expertise, but the amazing uh, amount of information it gives about different groups and the bottlenecks to accessing services, the concerns, the fears, the, the drawbacks of people engaging in anything or using any service in place could be very informative to you. So this question actually assesses relevance, usefulness, and friendliness and appropriateness of the feedback mechanisms in place. And if they exist, what are the key issues that come out of them? And that as a cluster, we want to actually target in the, H, uh, in the HRP. Satisfaction, we always ask this question, uh, uh, are people satisfied? What is the degree of satisfaction uh, with the assistance received? And here in that you will see, if you go to the MSNA, it is disaggregated satisfaction about uh, the aid itself, about the timeliness of the aid, about the, the how, how our frontline workers are treating communities, if, uh, if feedback is being given to, to our teams, if the teams are being able to respond on time. So all sorts of uh, disaggregated questions under this one. And then the last one on preferred information. Even if we always encourage clusters to go beyond their own mandate. So even if it's nutrition in your case, go a little bit beyond so that if you have groups like, uh, 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 I don't know, uh, people living with disability that have a little bit more needs in terms of information, a little bit more than nutrition related information, you are able to actually uh, refer to other clusters that could deal for example, with a major problem that this particular group could be facing in accessing nutrition-related services. I don't know. It could be fear of, uh, uh, I don't know, um, uh, uh, going to uh, like crossing distances or not having somebody to accompany these people to uh, the centers where you are providing your your services if if the camp management for example uh, uh, teams do not take care of that particular problem you, you, those groups will remain without uh, nutrition services i'm just giving an example on top of my head but we've seen this a lot in myanmar for example and in other uh, countries with the wash sector uh, that's why when we ask people a little bit more outside of our, of our mandate and we refer things that we cannot deal with as a cluster to other cluster or other sectors, th that uh, those solutions could actually very positive, positively impact how much those groups could actually seek our own services as a cluster. How does this link to our needs analysis and how does it link with the humanitarian needs overview? 
what we as AAP, we always tell people to include in the HNOs when it comes to AAP is two major, major uh, things, basically. And not in, uh, we're not asking people to add a page. We're asking people just to add the strict minimum that could give us an overview of these two main points, which is one, analysis of people's preferred channels for communication and most uh, needed information. Have we asked people these two? What is it that you need? And what, how do you prefer receiving this information? Do you want us to come door to door to your place? Do you want us to use SMS? Do you, uh, if we put, uh, uh, if we establish a hotline, will you be able to access it? Do you have phones? A lot of clusters or a lot of uh, teams we've seen on the ground use, for example, um, what we call the boxes, the, the feedback boxes. And a lot of time we see that nobody uses those. So maybe it's a very uh, good and, and and the re, um, efficient uh, sort of feedback uh, channel to put a box in a camp and, uh, and expect people to use it. But in many cases, they're not using it. A lot of times people do not know how to read and write and therefore those boxes are not being used. So are we doing the proper assessment of, of communication channels that people in their current situation can use? Uh, yes or no? And are we using them to actually disseminate the right information on time? That's one. It is very important to put that in your uh, in your HNO uh, and in, in your needs analysis, and the more you can disaggregate the by by groups, the more you are able to actually uh, resp uh, over how to say to to uh, to avoid problems in the future and to make sure that access is is much easier to all those groups. When I talk about communication channels, it differs to be saying a communication channel with young people with whom we often use WhatsApp and SMS and technology-based uh, 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 tools in a lot of places, I'm not generalizing, versus an elderly group or just a group of uh, uh, older people who do not use these tools. So that's why you cannot say I put to in place a commun one communication channel. You need to be able to know what are the needs of the different groups and, and, and use a mix of channels if you really want to reach uh, everyone. What, and the second point that, that we are very much in, encouraging you to put in your analysis is what are the AAP systems in place? Do you have them? Have there, is the crisis, are you in your second year of crisis, for example? If yes, was the first year a year where, uh, where uh, you as a cluster have put together an AAP system? For example, do you have an AAP working group, a community engagement working group? Do you have a, co a collective, as a cluster, a collective community engagement strategy? Do you as a cluster, as members of the cluster, collectively develop a feedback and complaint system? If yes, do you have data that came out of that? What is it? Uh, what is it telling you about bottlenecks that people are facing? Uh, and what are you doing about it? Uh, collective and coordinated information sharing approach. Oftentimes we tell people, don't underestimate the importance of coordinating messages. And when I say messages, I'm not only saying, uh, uh, I'm, I'm talking about the, the strict meaning minimum messages, like for example, uh, if you as a cluster uh, want to target a specific area with specific program, specific services, do you agree on, do you have standardized selection criteria for your beneficiaries if you have a food distribution, for example? If so, do people know about it? If so, what do they think? Because all of these, while you think it could, it could, um, it could be very time consuming and very critical at the beginning. In fact, it could avoid that after sometimes some clash ba clashbacks and some people coming to say, uh, being very negative about the assistance that you're giving or not being happy with anything that you do and the, the, your evaluations or your PDMs end up being uh, all negative. So if you put some time into avoiding that at the beginning by, by, by sharing the right information on time, by coordinating your messages as a cluster, as ma like all of you providing the same messages, you could be one, avoiding community fatigue with uh, different teams coming in and saying different things. And two, you would be also avoiding that at some point people come back to you as much as possible with negative feedback. Um, uh, what have the feedback systems tell us and what have we done about it and how are we responding? Do we have a response system? Are we closing the loop of our feedback systems? And what are the gaps? If we have gaps, what are, what are we going to do this year about it in the HRP? 
Uh, some HNOs have had have included HAP in in last year. We have done a review and we have seen that, but it is still in the overview section. So here I give you a snapshot of how it is and still the part one of the HNO. But the part two, which is the sectoral part, uh, and, and if I want to specifically mention your nutrition section, very few, if not none, had uh, an AAP component in that particular section. And and that is exactly the, the, the part that I just covered on do you have, which is this, do you have an analysis of preferred channels, the most needed information, and do you have an analysis of AAP systems in place? And if so, can you add it in your sectoral section of the uh, HNO? If so, you would be doing AAP in the best way when it comes to the HNO. In terms of strategic planning, the minimum actions that we encourage clusters to adopt is include at least one AAP-related strategic objective in your cluster strategy or your response plan. And second of all, when we talk about accountability, we talk about the best possible outcome to affected people, not only by engaging them, but by following uh, technical criteria that is uh, well recognized and standardized. And for us, this is where we talk about the core humanitarian standards and the sphere standards. So in your strategic planning, if you want to do AAP well, you need from the beginning to define what are the technical and quality standards that you will be adopting and monitoring across uh, the response. And in Include at least one indicator uh, around affected people's satisfaction with responses. Also use AAP criteria to assess and review partner project proposals. I can give you a list of criteria to assess uh, partner project proposals. Those could just include, for example, does the project make a link to potential joint activities or integrated approaches? Does the project of the partner apply agreed cluster tech? technical and quality standards? Does the project have a clear community engagement strategy uh, that all cluster partners are following? Uh, does the project have clear strategy for field monitoring, etc.? I could send you a list of that if needed. Um, also, in, in, in any strategic plan, explain how affected people have been consulted is always a good idea because, as I told you, the more uh, donors are seeing that it's hands-on and it is based on direct consultations, the best it is flying. Um, and put the rationale for targeting certain specific groups over others. Uh, and, and, and if possible, say that you have consulted with the communities if you have done so. We encourage you to do it at the beginning to actually uh, uh, explain why some are targeted and some are not. Proposed intervention and how these have been informed by the views and perspectives of people and a proposed approach to consult and engage with the communities. As you see, I am always putting a proposed collective approach to community engagement. So this is the main sort of lesson learned. You as a cluster, the first thing you can do is start putting AAP in your cluster meetings and immediately jump into developing a collective approach to community engagement and information sharing. You as a cluster, as a collective and feedback mechanism. If you are able to do that, you'll be on the super right track towards an excellent AAP system. If you ask me about the core humanitarian standards that I've been encouraging you uh, to use throughout, those are uh, the humanitarian standards. We can share them with you or you can just Google them. They're all over the place on Google. We talk about uh, uh, nine uh, uh, standards. The third one and the fourth one are basically two that we very much focus on us in UNICEF, for example, uh, specifically number four, which is humanitarian response is based on communication, participation, and feedback. But all those standards, uh, uh, are about, uh, for example, if you see number six is about a response that is coordinated and complementary. And this is where I stress again the importance of collective approaches. We want to do a feedback mechanism, let's do it collectively as a cluster. We want to do a community engagement strategy, let's do it collectively as a structure, as a, as a cluster. Um, I'll let you look at those uh, more. I can share them with Abby. Abby can reshare with all of you. Uh, but those are the sort of uh, Quran or Bible of uh, our AAP um, strategies uh, and trainings and uh, at interagency level and at UNICEF. Uh, informed 
communities early on about project is something that uh, we uh, people do not give enough uh, importance uh, to, uh, but could actually, and I've spoken about it, so I'm not going to repeat myself, but could actually spare you from having people coming in uh, in the midst of your program or at the end saying you haven't done enough, you as, a, as an agency are not good enough, you are not uh, inclusive enough, etc. So the more you, info I'm going to give you an example. Uh, I was part of a, a cash program and the way we did AAP, the way we actually as an AAP team uh, uh, advise the cash program to do their uh, intervention is to do uh, concretely town hall meetings from the very beginning where the authorities and the, stake the main stakeholders are present and informed uh, beforehand, but also uh, where everybody is invited. Now, people who do not come, do not come, but people will often hear from others in small communities uh, if others have been part of important meetings like this where humanitarian aid agencies come and tell them we're having a cash program this is going to be the time frame of it that we have specific objectives we are not here to save the world we have specific uh, amount of uh, funding we don't have a lot of funding to save uh, uh, lives that's not the purpose but we have a, a limited amount of money we are here to serve the most in need and we want you as a community to help us identify those most in need yes you will have a lot of problems yes everybody would want to say they are most in need but you will see the more you engage the more you take people's opinions the more you, you with them you will get to a point of defining your criteria and that will spare you a lot of problems in the future of people asking you how did you choose what did you do what is your project budget uh, you know it would clarify a lot of transparency issues from the very beginning on resource mobilization everything that i spoke about community engagement information sharing uh, informing communities early on having collective systems on feedbacks community engagement monitoring tools etc all of that requires dedicated staff every single organization that has asked their staff to double hat on community engagement ended up not doing systematic and thorough and robust community engagement they have ended up doing uh, uh, ad hoc uh, focus group discussions here and there or have captured some of people's views during pdms or post distribution monitoring etc but a systematic community engagement approach or a systematic good robust collective feedback system needs uh, the cluster partners to dedicate staff you could be three partners saying we put in place one staff each to actually manage a collective feedback system and i we could also give another webinar on specifically how to uh, develop collective feedback mechanisms in details because we do not have time to go into it again but we are ready to go deep into those sessions if you uh, wish in the future but just to tell you a good aap approach requires a good resource mobilization if you do not include AP early on in project proposals uh, uh, with clear and concrete uh, uh, activities it will not fly and you will not be able to do anything um, that is our main recommendation the costs that you need to actually uh, dedicate resources to are the costs related to community engagement, feedbacks and information sharing, surveys and satisfaction surveys. Who is going to do all that? You need people to, to, to spare time. So I can give you a list of things that you can actually put in your plans or put in your proposals uh, with like an estimated cost if you need uh, in the future to be able to account for AP uh, from a financial point of view. In terms of implementation and monitoring, uh, the minimum action is don't forget, as I said, to define a common community engagement strategy as a cluster, define your criteria for accountability and quality, determine and develop a, a feedback and monitoring system, and then review your cluster performance, not only from service provision and technical perspective, but also from an AAP lens. Include that in your uh, review. Monitoring is a, a huge and very important step in an AAP approach. Uh, after implementation, like needs assessment, implementation, we need to monitor and report. If AAP is not part of our indicators early on, 
it will never be part of our monitor of our neither monitoring nor our reporting and if we do not report on it it will be very it will not be visible and you will never get resources to actually fund it in the future so the more you put it in your indicators the more one you are able to see how are you doing with in that sense and the more you are able to uh, uh, mobilize funds in the future so define the most appropriate uh, uh, standards. You can take that from the list of the core humanitarian standards that I showed you earlier. Monitor and promote consistent use of these standards. That's you need to be able to develop a framework for that as a cluster. And that who is going to collect information related to these indicators? All of you, some of you. How are is this information going to come together at the cluster level? Who is going to analyze and who is going to uh, respond? And you as a cluster, how are you going to take in, uh, decisions that amend your strategy in the middle of the way, rather? from waiting till the end uh, as you collect this information. Are you regularly sharing information from that you're getting as you monitor those indicators? If so, are you doing it among yourselves as a cluster like you should? Are you doing it with donors? Are you doing it with service providers? And most importantly, are you going back to communities? This is the step that is often missing also under the, uh, the, the pressure of time. People say we don't have time, we don't have resources. We cannot go back to communities every single time to tell them what's going on. But in fact, you can. And that is the little attitude, that is the, the mindset change that we are encouraging you to have in your teams. That no, You need to be able to do it because this is what's needed. If you do it, everything will become better. All the, 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 the points that I mentioned in the presentation before. Are we as a cluster acting on responses and complaints received? How do we have dashboards that show us how good or bad we are doing? Uh, and how are we sharing? Do we have CTREPs? To report? Are we using those CTREPs to report on AAP elements, on how much people are engaged, or on how much feedback or complaints have we received per month or quarterly, and how many of them have we responded to? How, what are the most uh, emerging concerns, and how are we as a cluster responding to them? Are these part of your CTREPs? Are these parts of your quarterly reports as, as cluster partners? If not, consider adding them. Same for evaluation, always, uh, uh, always consider having consultation with people, not only with partners, when you engage a third party to come and evaluate uh, 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 the response. Um, always try and document. If you document, even in the most quick and dirty way, just like I said about assessments, if you do not have a proper documentation, at least document through emails what you have done, what has gone right, what has gone wrong, and, and share the learning with your uh, partners. And that is a, a message that I'm also giving mainly to the cluster leads of the nutrition cluster, because as a, as a leadership, you could help a lot in the knowledge sharing and the learning uh, component. Uh, and don't forget the step of sharing back evaluation with communities, which is often uh, forgotten and often seen as like the ideal situation. But if we don't do it, it's still OK. In fact, if we do it, it could spare us at also the hassle of getting negative feedback if we decide to extend the same program in the future to the same uh, geographical area with the same communities. Very quickly on country examples, uh, this is my almost my last slide. Uh, so the Somalia nutrition cluster, I've, this I've seen online, by the way. I haven't talked to the Somalia cluster, but if they are online, it would be great if they can come in and, and, and tell us uh, more. But I've read that the way they do AAP is, is at three uh, uh, scales, basically large, moderate, and minimum. The large scale is, uh, uh, is through WFP, who has put in place call centers, hotlines, phone lines, and interactive voice response and recording, which is a way to actually be able to respond to questions from uh, affected communities anytime, even outside of working hours. Some other partners in other clusters do 24 hours helpline if they have enough resources to pay a third uh, party on doing that. I know in Lebanon, they've done it in the education cluster, for example. Uh, moderate scale, uh, there is uh, some of the partners in the Somalia cluster. A nutrition cluster have put in place an online facility that operates in few sites and have complemented it with a random check on beneficiary experiences in the routine MNE, uh, 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 you know, monitoring visits. And that is part of what we all know uh, is being called the meal approach. 
and a minimum scale, which is all the Somalia nutrition cluster partners have been required uh, to adopt uh, this uh, minimum scale, which involves exit surveys with those discharged from uh, programs. But that is very good. We just recommend that you complement it with what WFP has done and what other uh, others have. Don't wait until you discharge people from the program to hear their feedback. Try to have feedback systems early on to know early on and being able to change and inform your programming early on in your response. Uh, that is exactly our recommendations in the last sentence. Uh, uh, and, and mostly, wherever possible, make sure to have uh, collective systems, collective feedback systems that you are able to uh, develop together as a, as a cluster and uh, with very clear linkages to other cluster feedback systems, specifically when you need to refer. So referral pathways are of utmost importance as well. If you really want uh, uh, to respond to all affected groups that are not always using the channels that you avail to them for nutrition related issues. Myanmar, the WASH cluster, for example, has uh, has uh, has trained all their cluster partners on AP. There are more than 50 partners. They put in place feed, uh, collective feedback and complaints mechanisms, uh, and have uh, uh, resourced it. Like in their in their, uh, they have collective proposals where they resourced uh, those systems, and uh, they have developed online dashboards that allow all cluster partners anytime to access those dashboards and see where they are from, which complaints have been uh, raised. Uh, uh, about what, what are the emerging issues that are, are recurrently being raised by communities as a cluster, they are able to discuss it in their, uh, in their monthly meetings and, and, uh, and, and uh, put that in their you know, monitoring uh, plans. They also have a very good uh, uh, referrals to other uh, feedback and complaint system. For example, they have a camp management team that have uh, a referral, uh, complaint and feedback uh, uh, system that is be not only related to one sector, that is cross-sectoral, which is what we always encourage all cluster to have. Um, and so whenever there's something related to WASH they, uh, that is beyond, sorry, WASH, that, and that is collected by the uh, feedback and complaint system of WASH, they are able to refer it to that other system that is able to respond to everything. Also, very uh, well noted in the Myanmar WASH cluster, they have included two indicators on AAP in their HRP. AAP, they report on AAP. It is in uh, their monitoring framework. They have it in the CITREP, as I told you earlier, and they have an inter-cluster community engagement strategy because they have a separate uh, working group on AAP and community engagement. Where they could do better is to how to link that working group to really to the clusters, including the nutrition cluster in Myanmar. So this is quickly, uh, I wanted to give you an overall, uh, our recommendation here is feedback and complaint systems need to be more collective for, because in Myanmar, uh, whereas they have a collective one, only the big organizations leading the WASH response there are actually using it uh, systematically. Other organizations are doing their own feedback system, which doesn't always feed into that bigger one. And that is a pity because they're, they have great tools uh, and so they're not feeding into each other. So that is our, uh, main recommendation if you want to, uh, from a technical point of view to the Myanmar, for example, cluster. Last, uh, last uh, in terms of overall recommendations, don't forget coordination on AP intervention is key. Don't have uh, uh, many community engagement strategies. Try to have one as a cluster that all of you can follow. Many hotlines do not work. We always give the example of the Rohingya crisis where actually uh, we went to one of the uh, sites and we've seen a big uh, flip chart in one of the sites with more than 18 hotline numbers in one geographic area. One had 18 organizations. Each organization had a hotline number. So imagine you as a community, uh, you have 18 organizations telling you to call them if you have a problem. So wouldn't that create confusion? We actually got uh, that, uh, that the, the picture of that was sent to us by the, our director of emergency programs just to tell us this is not the way to go. Uh, so coordinated approaches are the most efficient in these uh, circumstances. Don't forget also cross-sectoral feedback 
systems. If you as a nutrition cluster put in place a feedback system, yes, try to capture the nutrition elements first and outmost, but don't limit it to that. If people want to tell you anything related to protection or access or fear of uh, crossing some distances to go to your uh, uh, health services, try to capture that information, refer it to the other feedback systems or other agencies that have the response because it could affect positively your people, the people you actually serve, and in terms of their access to nutrition services. Don't forget, as a cluster, AAP needs to be a resource, and part of the resources that are needed are related to IM. If you have feedback systems in place, you need to have IM capacity. If you need to have dashboards in place, you need to have IM capacity. Who is going to do it in the cluster? Will you assign one uh, agency to do it? Will it be a, a task that two or more agencies will do it? This has to be discussed among you. And again, if you need more uh, technical support on how to establish collective feedback mechanisms, Mechanisms, we are very happy to also provide you with another webinar um, on that. If feedback systems remain sectoral, if you cannot do a cross-sectoral one and you still want to have only a nutrition-related feedback system and people can only raise the things related to nutrition, at a minimum, we encourage you as AAP to establish a referral uh, pathway uh, framework that could uh, actually uh, that you could use to refer uh, to other sectors. I just want to uh, end this presentation by telling you that I've looked at the framework that you have, the Nutrition Cluster Operational Framework on AAP. It is a good framework, but to, and, and you can still refer to it, but what it lacks is a little bit the practical aspect. So I understand if some tell us that uh, we do not uh, see it as user-friendly, because I think what you need is more what are key concrete activities that you as a cluster can have, and what is the cost estimated per activity, and how can you add those to your uh, uh, proposals. And if that is needed, we're also very happy to provide uh, that uh, guidance. I also want to just tell you about the nutrition, uh, that uh, about the guidance for nutrition cluster in Yemen. You can find it on Google and we can send it to you. I'm telling you about it because it's also very hands-on and very practical and can give you literally an overlook on all the activities, all the indicators, uh, the monitoring frameworks, checklists, tools that you can use uh, instead of uh, uh, starting something uh, from scratch. And please don't forget, we have added a, a, a bunch of AAP questions that I told you about in the multi-sectoral needs assessment. And we have shared it with another deputy cluster lead for nutrition, who I think has shared it with you. If you have missed that email, we are happy to share it again. And most importantly, don't forget to look at the core humanitarian standards, because when we tell you AAP, immediately, as a sign of them, immediately think of those standards. So as a cluster, put them on the table and start picking from them what do you want want to adopt as a cluster if you want to have a proper AAP approach. I know I've taken much, uh, I've taken 10 more minutes uh, than planned, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, we have received questions from many of you. Uh, I will mention them at the end, uh, but first let's take your questions. Over to you. Thank you, Carla. Um, we, I understand that the, the webinar was for one hour, and yes. uh, I mean we did a little bit late, so um, please forgive us for taking a few more minutes. But if there are any burning questions, please uh, let us know, um, and Carla will try to address them. Um, if there are questions that you wanted, or you, areas that you feel have not been addressed in the webinar, please feel free to write to us bilaterally and we will be able to, to do that also. Over to you. Does anybody have any questions? OK, so uh, I take uh, silence as no. Uh, if we can use the last uh, Hi, Kara. This, this is Isaac. Hi, Isaac. How are you? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. M mine is not actually a question, it's just a comment. Yes. Uh, you, 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 yeah, you were um, uh, referring to a certain kind of, you know, you know the view of some of the H, you know, and uh, you couldn't find you know, uh, AAP. I think it depends from country to country, because I understand, for example, here in, in Yemen, 
uh, when we were asked by OHA to develop our HRP, of course, we had a section on AAP. But when it came to consolidation, I think they ended up you know, putting it in a way that is actually in some, I think there's one paragraph which is talking about AAP, but the heading is not necessarily exactly, the, you know, if you, find, you are looking for AAP, you will not find it because the HC had her own way of, you know, uh, you know uh, putting this kind of, you know, uh, text in, in the HRP. So, Sometimes there are such, such, such kind of challenges that you may not find it because of some other reason, not necessarily because the cluster didn't uh, able to put it or forgot to put it. Thank, Thank you, Sark. Yes, totally. Uh, that's a very good point. Actually, what we've done is uh, identify keywords that could mean AAP, and we've done a word search. So not only we didn't look only for AAP sections, but we we have identified the key uh, terms uh, and we have looked for them across uh, the clusters. I'm not uh, generalizing. I'm just saying that in general, what we found is that yes, AAP could be covered in under different uh, namings in the part one of the HNOs, which is the overview, uh, but uh, less, uh, much less in the part two in the sectoral, in wh where the clusters actually uh, write their, their own analysis. This is where we're encouraging uh, clusters, even if you find it in the bigger overview, try to also add something uh, related to nutrition uh, in your own uh, sections. Uh, I think my suggestion, I think this needs to be communicated to watch as well. For example, um, yeah. there was a lot of versions of the HNO which we, we prepared last year, and then the last version, of course, was decided by the HC. Uh, all the clusters were given minimum kind of, you know, um, uh, you know the focus was actually on the, the first line, the second line, and, you know, kind of summary of all the overall kind of, you know, cluster response. So the rest of the sections, if you go there, for example, even like the cluster response strategy, you cannot find them. So maybe, again, you know, some discussion with OSHA in terms of how this kind of, you know, sections can be reflected uh, if we, we have to do, because uh, it's important, but sometimes we are very much limited in the kind in of... Words. The, the final, for innovations of what, you know, um, OCHA says, and particularly with, if you have a very strong HC like in, 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 in the image. Thank you. Very well noted, uh, Isaac, and I think we had started those conversations. We were actually also asked to review the latest templates that I think uh, uh, will be used this year um, and have added as much as possible wherever we could uh, these recommendations. Uh, what we're asking again is if you are limited in number, do, do not uh, worry about writing uh, uh, paragraphs. That's not what we're asking. Just put a line on two, if you can, on, uh, on those uh, important uh, uh, elements related to AP so that if you have them in your HNO, you are at least able to also reflect them in your HRP and have that continuity. Um, so, but yes, point very well taken. Thanks, Isaac. Anyone? Yeah, and in addition yes. to, to what Carla has said, I, I think this has been a, a very common um, feedback that has come from, from country clusters. We also do have the, the sectorial um, cluster strategy where, you know, you can go ahead and articulate it better, you know, be able to, to flesh some of the parts that cannot uh, be reflected in the HRP because of the word count, because of the many limitations, and sometimes the loss that happens when OCHA consolidates that. So there are two aspects of it. The first one is um, on the nutrition cluster or sector strategy, and then the next one is on the, on the HRP, on the nutrition cluster section, so that it doesn't get lost with the compilation and with the cut down of words that is done by OCHA. But what Isaac has said is really something that um, is being looked at, and it's, it's, it's real, it's happening at a country level. So. Yes, I know, I know, okay. and I very much hear you, but very, very good point, uh, Abby. Uh, if 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 it can be mentioned in a very uh, concise way in 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 the HNO, but also uh, developed uh, more in in your cluster strategy, I think, or your cluster situation and analysis, it could uh, it could be very good. Any other question that uh, we can answer now? Hi, Carla. It's Diane Holland from uh, UNICEF in New York, and I wanted to 
thank you and, and our colleagues at the GNC coordination team for putting together a very comprehensive webinar. I think it's it's very um, it was very practical and I think just to, to share my appreciation for it and I'm looking forward to further discussions um, in particular with the GNC CT coordination team on how we can um, ensure that within UNICEF we're we're keeping everyone at the same level of awareness and understanding um, so that we can move forward together in this. So just a big thank you from my side. Over. Thank you very much, Diane. Um, very good to have you on this webinar. And uh, we tried as much as possible to make it as practical as possible. Uh, but we, we can always make it even more practical if some of the participants need more information related to specific areas uh, in what we discuss. We are also happy uh, to share that and happy to talk to you separately, Diane, on this. Wonderful, thank you. Any other feedback or or comment or question uh, before we close? I understand we've taken six minutes past the time that was dedicated for this webinar. Yes, hello, here's Ingo. I uh, could give uh, just some feedback or comments uh, of potential interest. It's not a question, it's not a specific comment on something that uh, has been done in Cox Bazaar, uh, but just an outlook which might <clears throat> become of interest potentially in the future, because for us, <clears throat> we, we are dealing with a refugee setting in many, many camps, certainly two camps in total, and we are currently in the process of establishing, establishing a community engagement mechanism as part of AAP in all those camps and to do it as part of uh, our nutrition sector strategy for 2020, but also to set it up right now. Currently there's one partner doing it already, but we want to cover all camps in time for the um, <clears throat> development of the next, uh, in our case, joint response plan, JRP. So we hope that we will be able to establish now a broader system throughout the cluster in all camps, uh, uh, AAP that potentially gives us also information that we can use for the JRP development and also uh, to do it in a way that our partners have time for the planning for 2020 uh, to actually um, provide a, a budgetary request to the funding agency so that in 2020 uh, we can have regular AAP sessions in the different in all camps on specific different uh, nutrition sector relevant topics so uh, so to speak a series of AAP meetings with uh, same or similar groups so um, it's all in the planning stage, but it might become of interest uh, f uh, for the future. That is uh, great to hear, uh, Ingo. Uh, that is actually very uh, great to hear. Uh, if you uh, need any support or if you need uh, any anything or any session uh, to the cluster partners on AAP, uh, hands-on, to help you with that planning, uh, we are also here to support. But it's good to hear. Yes, thanks a lot. Um, if there's a need, I will um, come back on that. Perfect. Thanks. You're welcome. Anything else from anybody? Okay, I take that as uh, as uh, no, we're good. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, received uh, a couple of questions before the webinar was developed, uh, just to be able to know what to focus on in this webinar from uh, some of you, and we have responded to them uh, in writing. So I will be sharing our response with Abby, who can share with all of those who wrote to her even before the webinar, um, specific questions on AP or some experiences that they have been through where they needed more clarification on how they can do things. So that we haven't forgotten, and I will uh, immediately share the response right after uh, I close with you uh, this webinar. Uh, 
thank you very much from our side. If you need anything, there is myself and there is a whole AAP team in uh, uh, Geneva. We are here to help. Uh, you can either immediately contact us by copying uh, uh, Abby or the uh, Global Nutrition Cluster or uh, uh, contact them through Abby and the Global Nutrition Cluster. Abby, uh, over to you. I think you're still um, muted. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Um, thank you very much, Carla, for um, your support towards this webinar. And thank you for all those who've attended. I have taken the action points, um, which I will be able to share with us uh, after the call. The call has also been recorded. So we will share with you the link. You can be able to listen to it once more. Um, and please continue sending your areas of support, your request, and we will try to uh, support you systematically as you require. Otherwise, um, it's a bye from us uh, and hope that what Carla has presented has been useful and will be useful um, in the in the HPC, in coming HPC process. Thank you so very much. So thank you and bye-bye. And everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.